Well, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm very excited and I'm very uh, happy to be your speaker today. And I'm glad to navigate you to the rich history of my country, Haiti. But today I'm not going to talk about Haiti like just the independence of Haiti, which is one of the things that we Haitians talk more about. I'm gonna touch something that I think should call the attention of every Haitian, it's the fight of the women in Haiti and also the capital importance in the economy of the country. Thus, before I start, I would like to highlight something that happened this week to Haiti, in Haiti. If you look at here, the first picture is our under 20 years women um, soccer team who for the first time qualified on Sunday to go to play the World Cup that, that's gonna happen in France this year. So the country is very proud of them. It's the first time a female Haitian team is gonna play a World Cup, but not only that, it's the first time a Caribbean nation is gonna be playing a World Cup in this category. So the country is very happy and we are very proud of them. So yeah, um, my outline for today is, uh, I'm gonna see with you um, Haitian geographic, I'm gonna say women power in the pre-colonial time, and then what happened when we had the colonization, and after the colonization we had the independence battle, what happened there, and then we'll see after the independence battle, so what were the women, what, the, what did they do, what they had to do in the economy, and after we had somebody that any Haitian can forget, his name is Duvalier, his name, full name is um, Francois Duvalier, he was our first dictator in Haiti, so yeah, we have to see what happened with him, what happened with women under his presidency, and then after we see many female come to the politics in Haiti and they developed a lot of activities. Also, um, we're gonna jump in the current demography of Haiti to see how women, so how many women we have in Haiti, how they are involved, what they are doing, their education, and then today, what they can do. So before I start, um, my first question for you is, is there anyone here who knows where Haiti is located? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, thank you very much guys, because you know I don't wanna um, job in it. So I just put the map here. Um, I think I've talked many times about the location of Haiti. Yes, we are here in the Caribbean. We are in the Caribbean Ocean. We share borders with um, Dominican Republic, and we are neighbor with Cuba, Puerto Rico, and those kind of countries. So um, in Haiti, we speak mainly two languages. Um, although we have minorities that speak English and Spanish, but the main languages spoken in Haiti are um, French and Haitian Creole. As you can see here, most all the population speak um, Creole, but there is a mixed, so you can see the stats there. So um, what happened in Haiti is that before the colonization in Haiti, we had a society there. We had Aboriginals. So history is not able to tell us how many inhabited we had at that time, but it was estimated approximately 100,000 inhabitants in Haiti at that time. And at that time, it was not Haiti, just the country, it was Haiti, the island. When Christopher Columbus arrived to Haiti, he decided to change the name of the island from Haiti to Hispaniola. That means um, Little Spain. So the map that you are seeing here is the two countries, Haiti and Dominican Republic. And then at that time, we had like five regions, and one of those regions, Haragua was governed by a woman. That woman was a queen, Anna Kaona, that you can see over there. She was the queen of the region. She was like the president for this region. So that means even before we were colonized, we had women playing a very important role in the country. So after the um, Spanish colonization, we had the French colonization um, that started in 1697. At that time also, we had women, and it was probably the hardest time for women in the Haitian history, because yes, it was hard for the men, but it was very hard for the women, because they were um, abused the same way men was, were abused, but worse, men were not sexually abused, but the women were. So you can see they were de de dehumanized, so they were used to like, if you want to say nothing. It was a hard time for them. We cannot really have pictures that describe the um, situation at that time, 
but we have painters that can give us this kind of painting that ex represents exactly what happened there at that time. So, um, after this period, I mean, during this period, Haitian society started to organize the revolution. Because at the same time, the French Revolution was happening, it was happening, and Haiti also started his, its revolution. And at that time, women didn't just stay and say, okay, let's them and fight. We had Sanit Belair, that woman you see here, she was one of the biggest fighters we had in our history. She was one of the people who led the battle for the independence, Sanit Belair. And that woman you see here is Catherine Flo. She's the one who decided that she wanted to have a flag. While we are, we are battling, we are um, fighting, she decided we need a flag. And then she was the one who took the decision to create the flag for Haitian. That means we still see, even before the colonization, we had a woman, and then during the colonization also we had, and during the battle for the independence, we had also women playing the role. One of the women that many Haitian even don't know about it's um, Cecile Fatiman. Um, Cecile Fatiman is one of the Haitian that they don't really mention in history book, but she was one of the most important people also for the independence because before we start the independence, we had like a ceremony, a voodoo ceremony. That's where the I mean the independence really started. So she was a voodoo creatress that started this battle, and she was, so she was um, responsible to not only motivate the troop, but also to heal them when they are sick and whatever. So she was also very, very important in the history of, of the country. Now, after the independence, what happened? There was like a gap. Independence, women go back to, to house, nothing, they don't have any right, they are very limited to, to everything. There was no policy in Haiti, there was no policy that decided women don't have access to, to school. This is not a policy. But just family decided that, yeah, women stay home and then take care of the house and then farm with their husband, the, man, the, the one that are farming. And that was very, I mean, um, they were like forgotten by all the policymakers in Haiti. So nobody tried to help them. There was no women, women uh, rights in Haiti at that time. So, uh, but early, in like um, 1820, we had some women that started some movements to say, hey, we are here. So one of those women was Claire, Claire Eros. Claire Eros was like the first first lady of Haiti. She was the um, spouse of uh, our first president, Mr. Dessalines, who is the father of the independence. And she said that she was like a rebel. Even though her husband was the um, president, not really president, it was an empire. She was one of the people who said, hey, I don't want you to do that. I don't want you. She was like a rebel. And she said, hey, I want it to be like this. I want it to be like this. She was the first person to say, hey, women, they have their rights too. And after we had a lot of women that were engaged in politics, I have all the names here. Uh, we have FME, um, Dolly, we have uh, Jude Lachner, we have Pauline Buiz. They are all very, um, in, they were very engaged in the politics in Haiti at that time. People think that at the time there were no women in any of the activities in Haiti, but as early as um, 1820, we had, yes, women fighting and then um, struggling for their rights. But I highlight here um, Juliette Boussier, La Forêt Coutoua, because uh, nobody, I mean, many people could not imagine that as 20, 1820, we had female journalists. Yes, we had our first female journalist in Haiti. She was a very prominent women working in the field of education and journalism. And she was one of the one who, who would write articles to criticize whatever the society is doing against women. And we had like um, Anjali Dufu, who would be writing also about what's happening and fight for human rights. So after this movement from the um, 1820, we had this big gap where women fight was like silent. Nobody raised the voice, and then we didn't have really action to help women to. They were just reduced again to the um, farming and probably selling goods. But um, in 1934, we had an association that was created called um, Women's Social Action League. Like they said, uh -uh, we cannot keep it like this. We have to do something. This has to change. We don't want to have our 
our daughter is just staying and destined to work in the farm or to just sell. We don't want that. And they decided to start to create this big movement in Haiti that would lead to um, 1950 to get the women the rights to vote. So that was a very big thing for us because we could not imagine that as early as 1950 we could have women voting in Haiti. And those women were able to, to, to vote in the election that was gonna give the power to President Duvalier. This election happened in 1957. And they were very happy to vote because it was the first time that they were going to, to vote. And what happened led, uh, after that, when President Duvalier took the power, the first thing he did He's, he decided, mm -mm, we don't want them to be voting. They are women. Go back where you come from. He decided to shut out all this kind of movement, women, this kind of thing. And worse even, he would decide, if you want to have women rights, sorry for you, you will be killed. Yeah, that's, that's one thing. It's, it's a very sad page in our history. And then that happened in Haiti. I mean, the first election they voted, and in the same year, forget about it. You don't get it. So after this period, we had Duval Duvalier um, reigning in the country from the father to his son. I'm not going to go details about that, because President Francois Duvalier, before he died, he decided that his son is going to be the next president of Haiti. And then from um, 1957 to 1986, it was father and son leading the country under the same policies. And in, 96, in 1986, we had uh, like a riot in Haiti. We decided that we don't want this kind of dictatorship. All the people were in the street protesting against the, the, the government. And then, yes, Duvalier left the country, and then we had a new country. In this new country, we had the new constitution. We decided that this is the society we want. This is how we want the women to be. This is how we want the men to be. And one of the most important things for us in this, the definition of this new constitution is the emergence of Mirlan Maniga. She was a politician female politician, and then she was the biggest contribu con contributor to the constitution because she had previous studies in law and then she knew how to you know, um, update the constitution of the country. So she played a very important role in defining the new constitution of Haiti. Also, we have another woman who's still alive and still in politics. Um, her name is Susie Castor. She was um, the wife of one of the um, most brilliant politician that we had who passed away, but she's still alive. She's still fighting for human, uh, women um, rights in Haiti. But as early as, um, I mean, and I, in 1990, we had a woman president in Haiti. Woo, woman president. Why? Because it was not from election. It's because um, she was the um, president of the um, Supreme Court in Haiti. Our constitution written in um, 86 decided that if the president is impeached for any reason, the president of the Supreme Court is the one who's gonna take the lead. And at that time, Erta Pascal Trouillot was the president of the Supreme Court. She assumed the presidency. Most important thing for us Haitian and upright is that she was the first person in Haiti who organized a democratic election in Haiti. The best election we ever had was organized by a woman, Erta Pascal Trouillot. This movement for women's rights kept going in Haiti, fight, discussion, protest, everything. And then in 1995, we had our first Ministry of Women's Affairs and Women's Rights in Haiti. It was created in 1995. So here, one of the person that really helped to have this ministry was Marie Laurence Lasseg. That woman was seeing here. She was, since she was a lady, uh, a young lady, she was fighting. That's what she decided to do as a mission. She gave herself a mission to make sure that we can have this kind of institution that can protect the women in Haiti. And then, because of thanks to her, we had the ministry finally created. Now that I went far, and now I got to take you to the reality. What's happening actually in Haiti? Well, um, Currently, Haiti has around 11, 11 million people. You can see that it's slightly female society. It's not a huge difference, but if you see the numbers, 50% of the um, Haitian are women. 
more than 50% are women. I mean, nowadays the society really rely on women. And what they do, how they live, we're gonna see that later. And uh, the distribution of where they live, how they live is here. We have more women living either in city or in the rural area. We don't have really women living in villages in Haiti. Uh, in terms of education, um, what's happening right now in Haiti, the trend is for a society where before they decided that, the parents decided that women doesn't need, uh, don't need to go to school, there is a big, big, big shift in the situation in Haiti. Now you can see, as per the report from the UNICEF and the Ministry of Education of Haiti, one published in 2011 and the other one in 2012, we can see that we have slightly more women attending um, education in many levels, except for the university college. Why? The question is why we have more in elementary school, we have more in high school, but we have more in university. Well, the reason is still that we still have the sad situation that the economy sometimes obliges the women to leave the school to do other activities. Um, for example, Amen, Amen in Haiti, I can be young, as young as, for example, 18 years, I have a woman who is pregnant for me. I'm not gonna exit school, but she is, probably has to exit school to take responsibility of the child. That's one of the reasons that when you go to the university, you see we have less women. But this is an ongoing fight, so we are trying to, to change this in Haiti, all right? Uh, the main activities that women do in Haiti, I mean, actually, they are in everything. I was surprised to learn that we had a Haitian woman that learned mechanic science in like um, 2001. Everybody was surprised because this in Haiti we considered as a male profession, but now we have women in everything. But the majority of our women, they're still working in the informal business. What we call informal, informal business in Haiti is the small business, small little enterprises. I have my goods, I sell it in front of my house, or I go to the... Um, farmer's market to, to the public market to sell my goods. That's where we have more women, and they struggle every day to bring the food to the kids. They don't care if the father wants or don't want to take care of the kids. They don't really care, they just fight for the kids. And when the second activity where we have more women is agriculture. We have a lot of women farming, mainly the women that live in the rural area, they, they farm together with their husband or by themselves, because we have a lot of single mother in Haiti also. In terms of um, um, study, I mean the education, the um, profession that you study at school, there is one profession that is mainly a woman profession in Haiti, is the nursing. We have most of our nurse. I don't have the numbers, unfortunately, I was looking for the stats, I could not find it. Uh, most of our nurse, they are, our nurses, they are, they are women in Haiti. It's really rare to find a man in this profession in Haiti, so we have many of them. But what really uh, matters for us today is that we have so many women in doing entrepreneurship. So, I mean, this is, everybody's surprised that. What, is, what, what does that come from? Society who they didn't even have to go to school and now they are very active in being um, entrepreneurs. They, here is the stats how the distribution is. You can see the number is not huge, but when you look at where, you, where they come from and where they are now and how they are motivated to keep forward, I think, yeah, they are doing a great job in the economy of the country because now they can work as 30% um, of them, uh, I mean, 30% of the employees in the enterprises in Haiti are women, and then we have 27% doing their own business. I mean, they don't really rely on people to do their business. Uh, these are some events that we do in Haiti where we prize people that had good contribution to the society to, I mean, who worked to change life in Haiti. Before, we didn't have this kind, of, this kind of activities, but for sure, if we had that like 10 years or 20 years before, it should be all men. Now we can see we have women getting this kind of awards in every, every year we have them. Um, in 2010, out of um, eight winners, we had two in this contest were women, winners in their category. And not only they selected, but they were also the winners. Because I think there were eight out of 24 selected for the final round. So two of them won the prizes. So this is ongoing. 
And year after year, you'll see more women. I think one of the years in the prize, we had, in the awards, we had more women than men one of the year. So that means they are very active and they are really contributing to the economy of the country. Um, last week, we had in Haiti uh, an event that is called Women in Technology. In this Women in Technology, we see also that we have men taking I mean, action in the women in technology thing. Of course, it's a mixed society. We don't want to exclude the men and women activity. But this is an activity that we organize to let the women raise their voice, say what they have to say, where, what they think about the technology in Haiti. The company where I work for, many of the people in the higher position, they were women. I mean, the head of the technology department was a woman. The, the head of um, retail sales was a woman. Um, today, we have one of the biggest foundation working in Haiti in the, in the field of uh, basic education. Uh, this um, foundation is led by, by the tele, tele, telecommunication company called Digicel. The foundation is called Digicel Foundation. The president of this foundation is a woman. We have, in the parliament, we have, I think, um, we have three senators, women, and we have, I think, Eight deputies. I mean, uh, what we call here, um, the deputy is like, well, I think they are the chamber of, in, uh, chamber of representatives? Yeah, yeah, so the parliament. So we have women in many places. One of the latest policies that we voted was that to have the local uh, government, like the mayor, here, the mayor I see is one person. In Haiti, it's not one person, it's the cartel of three, per three members. So it's mandatory for each cartel when they are um, being, when they are announcing their candidacy to have at least one woman in each cartel. So this is one of the policies that we voted to make sure at least we can select women and make them take their responsibility to keep going because they were never, we left, we decided, the society decided to, lead, to let them um, behind, but they are as capable as us and they have shown that when we give them the power as Erta Pascal Trio, the president that we had, they can do good things for the country. So I would like to end with a, an extract of a poem that I wrote when I was younger about women. It comes like this. Femme c'est flamme, femme c'est nom. Femme qualité, femme qui a résisté. Femme qui a fâché et femme qui a marché pour chercher la vie. Vive femme. Thank you. Well, questions, because um, I wanted to, I would prefer to have this like a conversation from the beginning, open the door for questions, but I wanted to share this information, and then now I am really open for questions. All right, I think your second, he's first. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I think this is a good presentation of global trend in developing countries, and you know, the movement and education. I was wondering, uh, is there any observation of on the demographic side of the Haiti change? Like in many, some many developed countries, once uh, women get more opportunities to they get educated, develop a career, then uh, they get married at a later age, and there's a childbirth rate goes down, it impacts on demography, so you know, different things. I mean, do you observe anything like that in Haiti? Yeah, it depends, um, because still in the rural, area, we still have women that are farming and, uh, you know, they are very limited in, I mean, advanced education. Those women, they don't mind giving birth. But yes, the youngest women in the cities, they really resist to, to get married early because they want to keep going. And yeah, we have this tendency in Haiti. But in the main cities, yeah. Okay? Do you know if there's any affirmative action laws or rules in institutions so, so that there is like a quota of women that have to be in parliament or a quota of women that have to be in different things or is it more organic? The policy that we have is only for now for the uh, local government. It's a policy. You have to have at least one woman in any country. It, in, yeah, at least, at least one. It can be three women, but it cannot be three men. It's impossible. So at least you have to have one woman in the local government. For parliament, um, I think it's, yeah, we, they, are, they are trying to make it, but some women are even against this kind of 
for them it's like a discrimination. Even though we are trying to protect them, for them it's like, don't give us the, the law. Let us go there because we can. We don't want you to just oh, let me have pity of them. Let me count them. No, we can do it. We will be candidate for president because we can. Some of the women in Haiti, they really resist this kind of policy. But yes, they are, there's, a, there's a debate in the country about, about the, the topic, yeah. Thank you. I think, actually, sky is the limit for women in Haiti. Sky is the limit for women in Haiti. Nobody can stop them. That's why the policies even try, you know, to allocate quota to them. And I'm saying they don't even want us to define quota for them anymore. The, the sky is the limit. Now, the challenges, they are all, they are the same. Um, high level education, because of the reason I stated before, some of them, when they get pregnant, they have to leave the school to exit the school. And then uh, there was, at the beginning when women started to get um, trained in high skill profession, people, they were like reluctant in including them, giving them high responsibility. But this is changing. Now, I, unfortunately, I don't have the numbers, the stats to give you, but it's really changing now in Haiti. And then yes, they are, they are everywhere in politics, in government. We have ministries that are, we have, um, Ministers that are women, many. I, I didn't count the number before I, for the presentation, but I think, roughly I can tell you, I think out of 30 ministers, we have six women, I think. Yeah. Yeah. More questions, please? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. Here? Yeah. I mean, generally we identify villages as rural. Why have you given that separate? Um, it's a, yeah, it's in Haiti they decided that they decide that the rural is more the place, the zone that we have less development infrastructure, where there are more farming, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So they, uh, that's the, that's the rural zone area. The village is a little bit advanced than the. It's not a big city, but at least they can have electricity, they can have tap water. At least they have a certain level of development. So it's a village. And then after we have this, the cities. Yep. Okay, Af um, after, after, it's you. No. Um, it sounds like there's been substantial changes. Um, as far as policy goes, are there still, I mean, all policies, but public policies, Usually it takes a while for policy to yeah. you know, yeah. to adjust to that sort of change. Is that, yeah. is that still a hindrance to women? Yes, it is. It is because uh, every it's a trend for the policy. Public policies like this, when it's defined, it takes time to make its way. So yeah, it's taking some time to get there. But I think yeah, we are in a good shape. We are in a very good shape in Haiti. We are very optimistic that we will reach the moment that women can really, because they are, as, as I said in, my, in the description of my slides, they are as capable as men, they have shown that. And I love the example of the prominent um, politicians that we have in Haiti, and we have many. We have women around the world. I think one of the women who was formed, born in Haiti, formed in part in Haiti, in part in Canada, she became the governor of Canada. So that means Haitian women, they can. And I think now she's like the president of one of the, of the section in the UNESCO, the same woman. So yeah, we are getting there. Yes, uh, you as uh, Emad, what 
is you are feeling about the progress of uh, women in IC. You are not jealous or afraid of the the fact that uh, uh, if uh, thing goes like in this way, <laughs> maybe tomorrow the women will cover all the power in IT and you as a man. <laughs> this question is really personal, and I'm gonna I'm gonna answer it from my from my point of view. I'm not I'm not gonna respond on behalf of, of all the Haitian men. But for me, for me, I've seen my mother struggling a lot in life. I've seen many women in Haiti struggling. I've seen that, and I think they don't really deserve all this struggle. Whatever they can do to change their way, whatever they can do, where, wherever they can go. As I said, for me, I give them the sky for limit. Do whatever they want. And we have a good example. I like it. I like it. Here I said, I think it's here. We had our first, oh my God, I'm going to backward. Our first democratic election, the best election we ever had in Haiti was organized by a woman. Why, why to fear to give them the power? If they can do it, let them do it. Yeah, I'm not afraid. I'm just uh, yeah. We just need to be <laughs> we just need to be prepared. It's a fair competition. It's a fair it's a fair competition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The society was very much small before. The Haitian society was very much small. Uh, we reached the point that. If the woman is serving the man, there is a way to carry the plate. If I'm giving my, if the woman is giving the food to the to the husband, there is a way to carry the plate. If she doesn't carry the plate like this, the man decide not to eat in the house, can leave the house. We had this kind of situation before in Haiti, but this is changing. It has changed. Yeah. More question. Society is male dominated or female dominated? Uh, yeah. In my home, personally? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it depends. Okay. <laughs> if, yeah, 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 yeah. No, this is not very personal. Because <laughs> this is personal, but not very. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer this. Um, in terms of population, the tendency is that we are having more female born in Haiti. I don't know why, but we are having more female. The stats show that. Actually, we are 50 something percent women and 49 something percent men. So in terms of population, it's slightly female dominated. Now, in terms of decision making, it's really very between from where I live, what category of um, life I, ha I have. In the very poor Household, the man is the is the is the king. But in my situation, for example, I am an engineer. My wife is, uh, she is, uh, she has a bachelor in economic science. I work. She works. It depends on what we are doing. The decisions are communicated. We share decision. And many, many men in my category, we do that. We involve them in the decision for the life. Because most of the time we make mistake. Men, one of the things that we are very bad at, I don't know if it's like this in every country, but in my country at least, we men, we are very bad managing money. We spend all the money in nothing, in useless thing. The women, they, so why not involve them? Yeah, we do that. We do that. Yeah. Okay. And you first. For your project about <clears throat> the narration you gave about the women rights and the status of women in Haiti, I just wanted to know about the crime against women. Oh yeah. Uh, what is the trend, trend there? Are there properly addressed the system coming to us? Okay. Um. I think we can cut. We can we can see crimes in two sense. We can see it as violence against gender. We can see it as a General crime. crime uh, is actually in India, like there, is, there are instances of domestic violence. 
Yeah. Yeah. Domestic violence. It's related to the society. Yeah. So uh, the society has evolved in a great sense in Haiti. Yeah. What is the status of like that? Of course. Do you have any data or something like that? Of course, the data, I cannot give you the exact figures of it, but it's just decreasing. Decreasing because we, as, as of uh, 1995, we had the Ministry of Women Affairs, women affairs and women, women Rights. If a woman commits any kind of vi domestic violence against a woman, you can go to jail and you can spend a lot of time. And then she will be called not to approach this woman in the future life. So they have, they have public policy that protects the woman. We have this kind of policies in Haiti that protects the woman for this kind of thing. But of course, it's still happening for two reasons. First, because some women, they are afraid. They don't want to lose their men. They are not going to, to go to the court with their men. They, they are afraid. They accept to be abused. That's one of the reasons. The, the second reason is also, there are some men that we still think that they are, they are the king of the house, so they can do whatever they want to a woman. And the other reason also is economic. A woman who doesn't work, Maybe she's afraid that she lose the man that is supporting. And the third reason is the kids. Sometimes they say, well, if I live and my kids with another man. So it's still happening in the society, but yes, it's coming down. Yeah. There was, a, there was another question? You had a question? No. Well, for me, it's like, um, I'm very happy because normally my field of study is, um, is technology and I've had some experiences in uh, NGO, in training. But I always, when I was younger, I used to write some poems and many of my poems were about women, so I don't know why I always, maybe it's because I raised by a single mom, so I saw how she, she, she dealt with life so I am always sympathized with women. So I'm very happy today I have the opportunity to talk about women here. And thank you to all of you for your attention and your questions. <laughs>